add the printers. Okay, plotter one, plotter three, by definition, by plotter two is the one in the middle, okay? I still get people, is this plotter two? Yes, it is. The 601 is the HP one over there. We call it 601 because that's what HP calls it. It's on the front, it's an M601 printer. The Epson is the color printer. It will do 11 by 17. If you need color, great, use it. If you don't need color and you're doing like text, please stay to the laser printer, okay? So go ahead and close that. You should have all your printers added, okay? Now, whatever else you need to do to pull your stuff up, and I'll show you all how to add your paper here real quick. Sure, you can go first, yeah. Okay. When you come in, a lot of times the screen will be like this. You can see the little red lights on, the printer's on, the, the uh, screen's just gone to sleep. Hit any button and it'll wake it up. Okay, there's two little levers here. You want the small blue one. If you lift it, you can pull this out. Don't try to pull it straight out. Most of the time it doesn't work. Just grab the edge and pull it, okay? That's 200 bucks. If you leave it on the table, it will roll off, it will break. There's a broken part back there behind his head. You can see where it breaks. If you lean it against the wall, it will fall over, it will break. They will not sell us this piece. This is the piece that breaks most of the time. They sell us the whole thing, right? And it usually breaks all around midterms and finals, and we have to order a new one, and it takes out one of the plotters, okay? It's real easy. One guy once said, you need to build us a rack so we have a place to put it when we're done. I thought, you've got to be kidding me. Mm -hmm. Anything has a built-in rack, and it won't accidentally fall off of it. If you can come up with a good reason why you can't turn around and put it back on there, I would really love to know. I get people all the time, I'm just in too big of a hurry. It's like, no, you're not. You just don't want to do it. If there's a really good reason, I want to know it. Okay. Well, if you look at the machine, you want the black gear on the right, you want the blue gear on the left, and you want the paper to come off the top of the roll. And I get a lot of people who do off the bottom. If you do, there's a really good chance it's going to rip and tear and get a paper jam in it. Can you hold it for me a second? Thanks. When you get your paper, y'all have it as a, a group, right? This is the group's paper? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. If you buy your own individual, it's the same sort of thing. There's a plastic coating on it usually, and there's these little things in the end. If you take this one out, you can save the plastic. Um, a lot of times, like if you're taking it out of your car, bringing it in, it's raining or snowing like it has been lately, it keeps your paper dry. Okay. So you want to take it off, you want to take these things off both ends. Okay. So you put that in there for me. Thank you. I get a lot of people who will do that. They'll leave a, a gap between the paper and that black gear. Okay, don't do that, okay? That'll throw the machine off. You want to make sure, I'll use the table or the floor. You want to make sure it's all the way down. You want to put that back in, close it up. Okay, on this one, because it's brand new, there's a piece of tape on it. Put it on the machine. Okay. Now that sounded like it clicked in, but it didn't click in this side. You want to make sure both sides are in. It says it's ready for paper, which is cool. We want to hit OK. Down here on this bar it says paper. If it doesn't, you can use the up or down arrows until you get to where it says paper. And then you want to do a paper load and load roll. If you just start shoving paper in the machine, the machine doesn't always know what's going on. So you need to tell it what you're up to. Take your paper, put it on this thing, try to keep your edges flat. And start rolling it until you see it come out up here. We're going to roll it. What you do, you can let it go for just a minute. And it's going to line it up, or it's going to see if I lined it up straight. If not, I'll have to adjust it. 
while this is being done, <clears throat> excuse me, what I'm about to tell you is up to her. She's your prey, and I have nothing to do with it. But when you're bringing in your your uh, your pictures and everything into your projects, bring them in as JPEGs. Do not bring them in as PNGs. Um, PNGs have better quality. Not on bond paper, though. Okay, bond paper. You've all taken ink, and dropped it on the paper, and it's absorb. It spreads. It's what it does on here. So if you do it up as a PNG, your picture is bigger than it needs to be, but it's not going to do anything for you on here. You'll never see it. Okay, not unless you're using something like photo paper, because it. That's what it's made for. Bond paper, bring them in as uh, JPEGs, save it out as a PDF, save it at 150 DPI, never print it over 150 DPI. Okay, if you need help on where that is, I'll be glad to show you. All right, you want to make your file smaller, it'll print faster, and like I said, if you do anything else, it just makes it bigger, takes longer, but you'll never see anything out of it, okay? Um, so anyway, uh, while that's, or now that this is done, he wants to know what kind of paper it is, and I know it's a bonder coated, and I know it's a bond paper, and if I didn't know, sometimes it tells on there. Now there's two or three different types of bond paper on here, it doesn't matter as long as it's a bond. So I'm going to tell it it's a bright bond. Then it wants to know how many feet are on it, and this one I know there's 300 feet. So I will go down and tell it 300 feet. Now it's going to finish loading for me. Where that feet comes in handy is if I'm done, when I'm done, if I unload the roll correctly, it'll print a barcode on there, which will answer all the questions next time. But it'll print underneath here how many feet are left. So there's three, six, nine of y'all. If you each do a 10-foot plot today, there's 90 feet less, right? So it'll be 210 right here. It tells you how much is left on your roll. So since it's a group page, y'all may want to do that so you can look at the end. As it gets smaller, you can go, do we have enough room le or paper left on here for all our projects? Okay. If you don't care, just lift the lever when you're done, take your paper out and go. It's fine. It, but it will still ask you the next time you come in, what kind of paper is it and how many feet are left? Okay, I can't make it quit doing that. Now also, if we put the paper in here and it immediately started printing, uh, it's somebody else's job is printing, okay? Yeah, you need to put your paper on before you hit print. If somebody else didn't do it and their job starts coming out, hit that red X. That'll stop their job. Okay, it happens unfortunately. We had somebody print out for, uh, their Word document on somebody else's 42-inch paper. It was great. I mean, it was a huge thing. Um, and it's one of those, I'm sorry, there's nothing I can do besides go yell at the person who did it. All right, now it says, right, the PK cartridge is very low. That's fine. I want them to run out. Okay, very low is fine. Low is fine. Very low is fine. Expired ink means absolutely nothing. Ink doesn't go bad, it doesn't start changing colors, it doesn't grow little green hairs. Expired ink is just their way of hoping you'll toss it and go buy a new one. All right, so if it says it's expired, it's still going to print just fine. The other time I need to know about it is when it says it's out. So let's say I'm going to check it here in a minute before y'all start printing because I'm going to go. But if it was during the day and we were all here, I want them to run out. You can see how big the cartridges are, they're pretty good size. And they start saying they're low when it's about 20% left. When this thing runs out, I'll swap it for you. It'll stop right where it is. So if you're doing a 10-foot plot, 5 feet into it, it runs out of PK. It'll stop. It'll say replace the FTPK cartridge. I replace it. It starts right where it left off. Okay. But since I'm going to be gone, I want to make sure um, it's good for you all before I go. But during the day, that's why I'll let it just go. Um, so right now, it's ready. It's ready for you to print. Okay, so when you bring your stuff in, preferably bring it in as a PDF. Do not print from the web. Save it down to the desktop. Um, it works better if you do. Okay, now, excuse me. Before you hit print, right-click on it, whichever job it is you want to print. Right-click on it, go down to Open With. Go down and choose another app. Click once on Acrobat, click once on Always, say OK. That other one was Microsoft's Viewer. Microsoft's Viewer is bad. It's horrible to print with. It's bad enough to view, but it sucks printing. 
Acrobat is much better. Okay. Mm. Now, um, you see right now it says Epson. Okay, so it's definitely the wrong printer. But down here where it says plotters, those are wrong too. Scroll all the way up. It's okay. We, we understand. It's been a long day. <laughs> We want the screen is like 20 inches by 30 inches. I'm going to show you how to set that. Yeah. But we need to go to the right plotter first. Okay. So scroll up. You see where they say fountainhead plotters? You're on two. That's what you want. You want it to be the fountainhead plotter. And so the other ones are just wrong. So from here, you want to go to properties. Now, um, excuse me, cancel this for just a second. What are your dimensions here? Cancel. What, what is this dimension? 20. What is this dimension? 30. 20 by 30? Okay, yeah. then yeah, you can do that. Um, if it's the other way, we have to change some. But yeah, so go ahead and go back up to print. Okay, change your printer. Go to plotter 2. Go to properties. Okay, 20 by 30 is not a standard size, so you'll want to go to custom. Tell it what you want it to be. You have to give it a name. You can call it 20 by 30. You can call it Bob for all the machine knows, as long as you know what Bob means. Okay, save. Okay it. Okay. Okay, now it should show you here the size that you put in. Every time you plot, always move this that way, all the way. Okay, go ahead and say okay. Click advanced. Click the down arrow, change that to 150. Say OK. That should be all you ever have to change. OK, so it's telling you your size. You can see what it looks like before you print. Um, it hit fit for me just in case. Same thing, that's what I thought. OK, so as long as you're ready, hit print. It should start coming out. <laughs> that should be all you ever have to hit. Now, if if you had two of those that you were printing, you could hit print and then hit print. It would print one to cut it, print the other to cut it. Or if all of that had been gone over, you would still have to hit print one to cut it. If you do that, it will print one to cut it, print the other one to cut it. You can change, obviously, the top two or the other one. If one was cut, it would be cut by guessing it. Okay? But um, I wouldn't change 20 to 30 to it. Or, you know, if they're all 15 foot plots, Before you drive it to the type of paper you're using, so you just click this bottom left hand button. And that'll take the timer off. It's still going to be a second or two, but it'll take the timer off of it. Um, that's one of the things I got to get in and take off is that timer. The only time you really need it to be using like a Well, I have to plot it, yeah. It is 20 by 30, so we have to plot it. Oh. All right. Yeah. yeah.